So Tim, what do you got rocking here? Just uh, swelling up the heads of these vermouth barrels for that guild bottle, that plum guild mead. So you know, when we did the, um, the vermouth barrel aged aphrodisia, which we haven't right. bottled yet, that is so damn good. I think yeah. this is gonna be, I just pulled a sample of our, of our plum mead that's right. going in here. It's, I love the sweetness. I mean, it's semi-sweet. Right. Super, it's, I mean, you run this through a filter, it's delicious it's right gonna now. It's gonna be gorgeous. The color's beautiful. But I was really excited to work with it. Once we drop into the fermentation, some sultana raisins, saffron, yeah. jasmine pearls, bergamot, orange zest. This is gonna be, I mean, it's awesome now, but it's gonna right. be unbelievable. Elevated, man, all those spices. So when you, when these barrels came in, what did, what did you think? Did they look like pretty fresh? Yeah, actually they looked a little fresh, but you can notice over time sometimes that they, you can tell they're starting to dry out a little bit, so we got to swell them. So I imagine, I didn't look in these, were they dried out? Uh, not completely. I mean, there, was, there wasn't like vermouth in the bottom? No, All there right. wasn't any dregs left, but... So they were decent, but we didn't have any vermouth to drink. Right, exactly. That's <laughs> it's always, always kind of the bummer when you get barrels, right? When we get when we get bourbon sometimes, and and you pull the, the wooden bung out, which is funny, you gotta like use like a screwdriver and everything right. when they're really pounded in there. Oh yeah. And you're like, oh shit, there's liquid in there. And then we'll grab the coffee filter and yeah. you're drinking barrel strength, <laughs> like caramelly. Yeah. Like it looks dirty compared to like, you know, filter, but it's so yeah. good. And you can like chew on the charcoal from inside. Right. Like, all right, so we gotta swell these guys up because right. they 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 were fresh, but they weren't wet fresh. So. Not wet fresh, right. So but they need to get a good but they're, they look decent enough that we're not going to have to actually do anything inside as far no. as... All right, cool. No, definitely not. Um, I'm not. I didn't notice too much drying, but they will need some love. Cool. All right, I'll get out of your way while you hit this guy. Cool. Yeah, it's always good drinking the drags out of barrels when they come in. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rare opportunity yeah. that you get we in get some few high west opportunities stuff. in life. Nice cool. and hot. You know what? I'm gonna I wanna tighten the hoops up on this guy, so I'm gonna roll it out a little. Cool. Get this water. Splashy splash. Alright. We got our Cooperage tools and a hoop hammer. You know, Jen always used to say that when you're making mead, you make a huge mess. You clean it up, and at some point in that process, you make something amazing. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes this job's like being a kid again when you're just. That moved down about a sixteenth of an inch, so not yeah. bad, but definitely getting tighter. All right, that one's not moving anymore. Let's see how this guy goes. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just amazing how these barrels, I mean, there's a rivet in the hoop to keep it together, but there's no nails. No. It always kills me. Right. How awesome that is. Coopers are pretty amazing. Have you ever, um, I've taken barrels apart, but I've never put one together. I've never actually put one together, but I've seen somebody doing it. I've definitely taken quite a few apart myself. Nice. And they just All won't right. swell anymore. Let me see how we did. All right, that's not moving anymore. I think we've got those pretty secure on the top half. Yeah. So I'm just checking out the crews to see. There's like a bubble over there that could right. be from me moving around, but no, you know what? If you look, you can actually see a stream of air coming up right here. Right. And so I think we need to burn some wax into there. I want to mark this because I'm going to tip the water out of it. Do you have a marker of any kind? Yeah, I do. All right. I'll be able to see that. Cool. All right, I'm going to dry this guy out a little bit. It's still bubbling right yeah, there. Yeah, I see it. it smells good. Toast the dough. Nothing like it.
All right. Oh, it's gonna. Isn't it cool? We use beeswax. I know. To seal kinda, mead barrel, like a full circle, right? Yeah. <laughs> Making a waxy mess, but I think that's going to seal that up okay. I mean, it was a well. tiny pinhole, so yeah. this ought to get us in there. Right. I'm going to let that settle down and give it one more dose. So barrels are not held together with nails at all. Each one of these staves is perfectly shaped at the right angle so that when we squeeze them together, with these hoops, when they're, when they're first made, they're perfect. And then over time, you fill them up and that liquid gets into the staves and it makes everything swell. Just like wood will swell when it rains on your deck and then when it dries, it shrinks up. And right now what we're doing is swelling the heads of the barrels because the staves are so perfect. Like when you look really close, I mean, there's zero gap, right? I mean, these things are, so tight because remember this is going to have like 60 gallons of liquid in it and that's going to weigh with the weight of the barrel about 600 pounds and we're going to stack them up five high and so we want the barrel as strong as it can be we want the barrel not to let any sort of liquid seep out of it and the the, the biggest weakness that we find in in working with barrels, whether they're older barrels that we bought new or whether they're spirits barrels, in this case, like a vermouth barrel that, that we bought that someone else had, we don't know how they took care of it, right? I mean, these, someone took pretty good care of this, but we found this little leak and that's the most common spot, the cruise. So when you have this, these are the, um, the regular staves, just the staves of the barrel. These are head staves and these, these are held together with with wooden dowels. They drill holes and then they put pieces of wood that sandwich these nice flat pieces of wood together and just the nature of liquid swelling that keeps it tight. And so right now we're putting liquid on the heads of these that's hot that helps swell the wood as well. So we're, we're forming this bond between and it's sort of an invisible bond, right? Because again, no nails, no glue. The only thing we've got in here to assist with filling a hole like we just did, uh, and again, tiny pinhole, is some beeswax. So we're gonna swell this barrel up on this head, then we're gonna flip it over later after we get this about a half hour on the hot water, because then it cools anyways. We'll swell the other side. And this is a repeated process that we do when we work with formerly loved barrels, so that when we fill these with a very expensive amount of mead, we're not gonna have them leaking out. And you know, occasionally when you walk through our barrel aisle, you can see that certain barrels leak. I mean, the greatest example I think is, is really rum barrels because yeah. in the Caribbean, they often store rum barrels, most of the time from what, I haven't been to a distillery yet right. in Jamaica or Puerto Rico, but the barrels are on their heads like this. And instead of barrel racks, which are kind of expensive, they just put them on pallets and they'll be stacked like to the <laughs> ceiling. I mean, imagine an earthquake with that. Oh. And, and the tops of all those rum barrels, they actually have, like here you can see that we have a bung right here. I can't roll this or I'll spill all the water off, but we got a bung right here, right here. And that's just wood on wood and nothing's gonna leak out of there if that's the right fit. But in, with rum barrels, they'll actually have a, a, a head bung. Right. And that all dries out because through evaporation because of you know lower humid days or high temperature days and just time really right yeah. you're going to have some of that alcohol going away and and the tops can dry out and so our biggest challenge is typically rum barrels and i'm looking at some drips right now back in our barrel room but for the most part like because we really we actually really love working with barrels we can maintain their integrity and and keep them around for for a lot of time and so right now i'm taking a look at where we, you know, I made this mark, which was over here, kind of right in the middle of where you can see the burn from the blowtorch. And there's a little more wax, whatever, that kind of rolled to the side. And now there's no air coming out. Right. So we just were able to identify, kind of like when, you know, you pop a hole in your mountain bike tube yep. and you like squeeze it and you're like, I'm gonna and pass in a bucket this. of water. Yeah. Exactly. So excited about these barrels. <laughs> so excited about these barrels. <laughs> 